what's up guys, in this video I wanted to go over some of the loot farming that I've picked up on in the Division 2. With the raid being just under 2 weeks away, you're going to want to bring your absolute best build in there if you want to complete it on the first day. This farming guide is meant to be a pile of different activities that I've been using in order to start putting together build videos for you guys as well as what I've seen out there and tried and tested to be true. So first up, of course, I'm sure you guys already know the Dark Zone is the best place overall for you to be. So there's two schools of thought here that I've used. There's probably the one you've all heard of before, that's the Dark Zone South because it's so small, there's a bunch of landmarks, and all of the flyout locations are fairly close together. Obviously, if you're going to be clearing landmarks like this, it's best to have a four-man squad, but it's not completely mandatory. I've done it solo, and it works just fine, just slightly slower than otherwise. I always recommend the Occupied Dark Zone because I hate everything being normalized. However, the way that I've found when I want to be lazy and still do the Dark Zone, because it works really well, is to go into a normalized Dark Zone, go rogue by smashing my little orange circle, and stealing as many Dark Zone chests as I can. Yes, it does put you rogue, maybe you get killed, but to be honest, the amount of loot that I get that's not contaminated is so much more than the stuff that is, even if I do end up being killed by a group of four, it doesn't really hinder me too much, and if that happens, I generally just switch servers and go back to playing. You can grab so many high ends just by doing this is kinda nuts, and it doesn't even really take that much work, not to mention if you do this long enough, you'll eventually level up your DZ rank to be 50 and be able to get the caches and access the Thieves' Den vendor. If you are completely against the Dark Zone and anything PvP related, I feel your pain. Not a huge fan of Division's PvP system myself, but I can tolerate it when I have a build going. Anyways, what I would tell you to do is bounties. There are so many bounties for you to do, it's kind of insane, and all of them award you with a bunch of gear pieces for you to use, as well as a ton of money and a good amount of XP. What you'll want to do is actively go after the big boy bounties, in which you have to complete the little guy bounties to get access to. Those get the most amount of reward for the amount of time that you put into them. If you happen to get challenging and heroic bounties on your projects, make sure you prioritize those and matchmake them if you don't feel like you can do them by yourself. Once you are completely out of bounties, there's two more things you can do. The first thing I do is tier 3 control points. Always make an effort to do all the activities attached to a control point, with these little lines in order to make the control points have a higher alert status. Doing this increases the loot you get from clearing it and also gives you a blueprint that's going to make builds a whole lot easier for you to do. A lot of people say tier 4 control points, and if you have a bunch of people with optimized builds, I'd say that's a good way to go. But for solo, the difficulty increase from 3 to 4 just isn't worth the fairly marginable increase drop rate. Doing this method also opens up for the last option, a loot run where you run around the open world and pick up all the caches and stuff that you see. Gives you a bunch of materials and items. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, I tried to draw this out on the map for you, and it looked like I gave my daughter a crayon and she just smashed it into the screen a hundred times, so I'm not even going to bother showing that to you. Fortunately, it's not really that necessary. If you just go and donate to some control points and scour the area, then you'll be able to see all these caches and resource points through walls while you're running around. The best spots that I can tell you to go to are here on the south southwestern side of the map, I guess, and here on the south southeastern side of the map. In these areas, I've found the most amount of caches as well as the most amount of control points that I can donate to, being able to see these things and get those pieces of gear that you're so desperately after. If you do this a bunch, you can actually end up getting about 100 items an hour and completely filling up your inventory, and it's an absolutely fantastic thing to you if you find yourself out of crafting materials or resources to level up one of those control points. So definitely try that if you've got nothing else to do. That's pretty much all I have for this video, guys. These are my tips on how to get the most loot and get raid ready. Leave me a comment about how you feel about these tips and what you guys do in order to get the best loot. Like this video, it really does help me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel for future Division 2 content. With that, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.